So here's the pond. This is my ground level one. Um, on the ground level, the herons like to uh, attack it and eat all your fish. So it's a bit unsightly, but I've got metal mesh now over the top of the pond. You will need to take some sort of measures on um, protecting the fish from the herons because they will come down and eat your fish. But uh, this, this I rebuilt uh, four times, the ground level one, because I was never happy with it first time round. But then through this section here, underneath these timbers, and this little pot here, um, let me explain. See now this is my koi pond, very few lilies left because um, the, the koi just like to destroy it. But this is about three and a half foot deep. It's not deep deep but it's deep enough for the koi. Water actually overflows through there where you can see that leaf that's stuck there. I'll just move that leaf out of the way. Anyway, that flows through here so it's on constant overflow and underneath this tub here is lift this up a bit. The green pump there pumps water up that pipe all underground and back into the big pond. This one. So it's constantly circulating water all the time. It's, it doesn't go through any filters. All it does is keep it level. So, with the water circulating off the top, it removes all the leaves because you've got a constant flow of water all the way around. So this is just like a leaf catch and debris, anything else that falls in there. And then, I'll just put that back in there. That runs down that pipe, and at the end of the pipe, I've put um, an old piece of sock stocking or um, them um, pop socks that just held on with a cable tie loosely fitted. Just get rid of these leaves out of here. And there weren't any leaves in here because I had actually cleaned it out earlier. But now I've lifted the lid, all the leaves have dropped in. But what you see here is a ball cock. Um, that constantly keeps the water level because as it's pumping out of the green pump there, it pumps it up this pipe, goes all the way round and back into the big pond. And then it overflows again, so it's just completely circulating, circulating all the way round all the time. It's got the lid off here, bloody leaves keep blowing in. Right. Um, pipe over there. That side is literally just a siphon pipe. And that goes in, the dog gets out of the way, into the ground level pond. So as water evaporates out of the ground level pond, it literally siphons it out of this hole here by that pipe. So the pond stays the same level all the time. I don't have to actually manually come out here and top up my ponds because they will evaporate, especially in the warm weathers. As you can see here, that's just dripping away that ball cup. Because obviously some water like you know it still evaporates even in this weather. So that's on a constant little drip there just to get the levels up. So both ponds actually stay the correct level that you want them all via with this ball cock and that pump there. Right, I've just put the cover on that back over that. Bloody leaves keep blowing in the hole. I don't want the leaves in there because it blocks the filters up. Um, but as you can see on top of this little pond there's leaves blowing in there. I just get the net and scoop them out every other day sort of thing, you know, as and when I need to. But of course the bigger pond 
it circulates all the time and it runs through the little catch trap there and uh, keeps life, makes life a lot easier with the leaves just pouring through the hole. So what I was saying earlier, um, this is my little log cabin shed. So all my filters are inside there. So obviously the pumps are in the ponds. It's a bit of a job to see down there through the water, but, but there's a pump in there and that literally pumps all the way along here and it goes up inside the shed. Put a light on. So you can see all the mass of pipes see a bit of a job to see actually. But there's pipes uh, running inside and out of the pond. It comes in along the big pipe and then down there I need a torch on this, but uh, I'll get a bit of light and there you go. Right, both of them, there's two UV lights there, so water is getting pumped from the pond up through them two UV lights, and one of them then goes round to this smaller filter here. This one actually filters out finer particles than what this bigger filter does. This one takes like bigger debris. A lot of the big debris goes into that circulation pot here. But it also, all of it all goes through um, two 9 watt UV lights. Also, uh, there's a little gadget down there, see that flashing away? That's an electric pulse. And that wraps around um, a pipe slightly out of sight there. It's here anyway where my finger is. But the wire is wrapped round and round and round and round, round the wire. So as the water is coming from the pond up towards the UV lights, it's actually getting electric pulsated here. This all aids in killing off algae, so it keeps your water clear. Same with the UV lights, they keep your water clear. Anyway, these two uh, filters here, they're for the koi pond, but over this side, I have this big filter here. Now it's not running at the minute because um, outside here, after many many years, that concrete pot here, ignore the dog, but um, what it does is where a sapphire is over there, you can see a pipe just underneath her there. It actually runs out of the filter through there and it runs into this little pool here and then into and out of these two pipes here into this other smaller pool and then through that single pipe there and back into the pond. So in there is obviously a pump and the pipework is hidden all underground here and it goes through into the corner up there. Ignore that black pipe coming out of there, that's an overflow when I'm cleaning them. But, um, the pipe goes in and underneath and then inside the shed and it actually comes up and into this UV light here through the UV light also there's another uh, electric pulse it goes around the pipe that comes up and into the UV light so both the ponds actually get a UV light and electric pulse and then it pumps into this big filter system. That's that drain pipe that you can see outside. It runs in underneath. Literally, when I just drain it off, it runs in and soaks away. Um, the wall comes into the filter through the UV behind there and then um, runs out the back. It runs all the way around back outside through the building again. And then you can just see it through the ivy there. So there's a black pipe there, runs all the way down. Again, it, it just goes slightly underground, right where Sapphire still is, and out, out underneath where she is there. So all the pipe work is, is hidden. But in this little pool here, I've got a leak on one side. After many years, um, the brickwork here is actually cracked and um, I need to do a bit of filling and repair with that to get it back up and running again. 
no real hurry though to do that in the winter because um, you should be turning your pond filters off and your pumps off and everything in the winter and just let the water sit um, I always keep the circulation one underneath this board what I showed earlier uh, I keep that one running just to keep the water levels up and it's also moving the water around still although it's not going through any filters you only need to really filter it if it's going um, uh, you only need to circulate the water in the summer months through a filter really you know when you're feeding the fish um, you know they they and shite in the pond etc and all that you know what I mean and then uh, you can purify your water obviously through your filter and everything in the winter time you won't be feeding them if it's below 50 degrees so they will just be sitting there nice and comfortably at the bottom of the pond because that's where it's warmer in the winter believe it or not at the bottom and they will just chill out through the winter come the beginning of spring when the water level comes up um, you'll start feeding them again I have got here that water's bloody freezing uh, I don't know whether you can actually see that or whether it will focus in I'm trying to get that on the lens but it is uh, 48 degrees just in case you can't see it probably there so we're below 50 degrees and we just uh, don't feed the fish now just leave them let me get on with life. I need to dry my hand. That's bloody freezing, that water. Well, it's 48 degrees Fahrenheit. It's cold. Bloody cold. So, yeah. If you can, when you're building your pond, hide all the piping. And build a shed. You'd be surprised what you put in a shed. So I've got three filters in here. Two for one the big pond and one big one for the little pond. Then of course up the top here we've got food, clock, electric coming in, barley straw, other bits and pieces, garden lights, all sorts of rubbish in here, spare piping, more garden lights, my old radio. I listen to that when I'm cleaning the filters out. I keep my jet wash in here actually for the top of the garden. And then the feeding pots. Other bird feeders, switches, lights, plugs, you name it, timers. So a shed is pretty much a good idea. Otherwise, you're walking up and down, up and down the garden from another shed or somewhere in the house to put stuff, nets, and of course behind the door, spawning brushes to go in in the spring or just before the spring, get them in early. More nets. And this is bone dry in here. It's got a double roof on. And one other thing I just wanted to point out. This stuff here, this is that non-rotting pond liner. It's like a fibrous soft cloth, very soft but hard wearing. But you can leave it wet and it doesn't rot away. And it'll protect your pond liner from the back ends and stones and other rubbish and everything else from piercing the rubber, the DPM pond liner, which is like this stuff. That here, stretch a bit. This is just a bit I've had left over from the smaller pond when I rebuilt that a few years back. So yeah, a shed is a good idea to fill it up with shite really, along with all your filters and hide all your piping outside. Last thing you want is big pipes feeding over the top of your pond. It just looks a bit unsightly.